This is your WXEO Daily News Roundup for Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 FM and 1230 AM in Wausau. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Milwaukee's Alverno College is laying off 37 employees and cutting some undergraduate majors and graduate programs. Alverno leaders say the moves are necessary for the college to survive. 25 graduate students will have to finish their master's degrees somewhere else. The U.S. Secret Service could release its final security zone for the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee any day now. Like a lot of Republicans, Senator Ron Johnson wants the protest zone moved farther from Pfizer Forum. The plan has to be changed. I'd like to see uh, Mayor Johnson step up the plate and demand change as well. Again, this is in all of our best interests. Governor Evers ought to be demanding change as well as, uh, you know, obviously the Republican Party is, is, you know, we're asking for this concern to be addressed. Johnson on WISN-TV's up front. The state Supreme Court is expected to issue a ruling soon about ballot drop boxes. University of Wisconsin political scientist Barry Burden. The Supreme Court has considered a new case that would allow them again, and there is a new liberal majority that seems more inclined to permit those again as they were used in 2020. Last week, justices gave local clerks flexibility about locating absentee polling places, but kept a ban on early voting vehicles in place. The state of Wisconsin recovered about $33 million in fraudulent unemployment claims last year. The Department of Workforce Development says it looked into more than 2,300 identity theft cases and did almost 2,000 worker misclassification tax audits. DWD officials say they're intensifying their efforts to fight unemployment insurance fraud. Scam artists are calling business owners in Wisconsin pretending to be from the Public Service Commission. The PSC's 800 number even shows up on your caller ID when they call, but it's a scam. Consumer protection professionals say the PSC is a regulatory agency, not a utility company, and they don't call businesses demanding payments. The world's largest tubing festival was held over the weekend in Wisconsin. The Fat Far in Chippewa Falls celebrated 35 years this year. Thousands of people take their tubes, kayaks, and canoes down the Chippewa River every Father's Day. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WXEO Bull Falls Radio News, I'm Melissa Kay. Drivers saw a slight increase in gas prices of 2.6 cents over the past week. The average today is $3.25 per gallon. That's 12.2 cents lower than a month ago and over 27 cents lower than this time last year. Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, said the slight increase should be short-lived. He thinks we'll return to falling gas prices in most states soon. Prices in central Wisconsin range from 305 to 318 per gallon. We're hitting warmer temperatures this week. The jump from cooler temps to hot can create conditions for pavement buckling. The Wisconsin DOT is warning you to be alert and take extra caution. The higher temperatures can cause slabs of pavement to expand and push against each other, causing the pavement to buckle. This can create unexpected bumps or dips. Slow down and pay attention while driving. It feels like summer already, though the first official day isn't until June 21st. You're probably already outdoors enjoying the beautiful weather. If you happen to find a tick on yourself or your pet, the Marshfield Clinic Research Institute is still asking you to send them in. So far, 3,200 ticks have been submitted. Most are the usual dogwood tick and the deer black-legged tick. However, they've found nine brown dog ticks and five lone star ticks. Researchers say this is intriguing as it may indicate spread from their typical habitats to Wisconsin. These tick species carry diseases such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Erlochiosis. You can help with the research by sending in ticks dead or alive. You can request a prepaid tick collection kit by emailing TICS at marshfieldclinic.org or by calling 715-389-7796 extension 16462. June is National Home Ownership Month. The Wisconsin Better Business Bureau says the median asking price for a home right now is $333,000. Buying a home is one of consumers' largest and most significant investments in their life. The BBB warns of the importance of being on guard for home improvement scams. These are often unsolicited offers from a door-to-door salesperson or an ad posted on social media. The BBB recommends receiving at least three quotes from separate businesses before settling on a final decision. Never pay the total project cost up front. Deposits should range between 10 and 30 percent of the total project cost. It's also important to understand licensing requirements and be wary of too-good-to-be-true deals. You can find out more at BBB.org. 
The Wausau Concert Band plays this week. They'll be at Marathon Park on June 20th. The concert starts at 7 p.m. Wisconsin Lightning Safety Awareness Day is tomorrow. Thunderstorms can develop quickly. Ready Wisconsin says if you can hear thunder, lightning is close enough to strike nearby. The safest thing to do is head indoors. 14 people were killed by lightning in the U.S. last year. The safest place is to seek shelter inside a sturdy, enclosed structure such as a house. Get out of open areas and stay away from bodies of water such as lakes or rivers. Never take cover under a tree. If you're inside a vehicle, avoid touching metal surfaces. While indoors, don't touch anything connected to an electrical outlet and don't touch water including plumbing. Stay away from windows and doors and wait at least 30 minutes before going back outside. If someone is struck by lightning, call 911 immediately. Start CPR if you are trained and certified. Don't be afraid to touch them. The human body cannot hold an electrical charge. And that's what you need to know. I'm Melissa Kay for WXEO Bull Falls Radio. Brewers head west. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers open a series against the Angels in Anaheim tonight. On Thursday, they play the Padres. Seven games in seven days. Center fielder Blake Perkins. Yeah, very busy road trip. Um, I mean, I feel like we got 10, 12 guys who are from California, so it's going to be a lot of family and friends, so I guess trying to have to balance that with winning every day. Um, But it'll be interesting, right? We haven't we haven't played any uh well we've only played the mariners right so um it'll be good good weather uh and we're gonna look to come out every day and win that day so tomorrow win tomorrow perkins with a spectacular throw from center to home plate to end yesterday with a five to four win over the reds manager pat burphy we're not great but that's the way you play championship ball you know what i mean we got thrown out the first stolen base what did we do you know q kept them going you know what I mean? We kept running. And that's just kind of like an attitude. NBA Finals Game 5 tonight in Boston. The Celtics up three games to one after losing by 38 points Friday in Dallas. Drew Holiday. I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's tactical. I think it's mental. Um, again, I do think it's uh, being a more tested team, but I think it's about locking in. Um, I think we will make adjustments out here today and then uh, obviously do the best we can to mentally prepare for another battle in, in Game 5. That's the Celtics' Drew Holiday. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Miles Teller has racked up some pretty respectable credits during his career. He is about to add an officer and a gentleman to that list as he will join the cast of the remake of the 1982 film. Teller will play the lead character, Zach Mayo, originally played by Richard Gere in the original film. Teller's credits include Whiplash, Top Gun Maverick, and more recently, The Offer, a series that explores how TV producer Al Ruddy muscled through the studio system to get The Godfather made. A documentary about Amazon workers trying to unionize will be released this coming fall. The film focuses on workers turned organizers who had no big backing and ended up doing the unthinkable, unionizing an Amazon workplace in Staten Island. The film has enjoyed a successful festival run, including at Sundance this past January, where it brought home a special jury award for Art of Change. The film will hit theaters October 18th. It has not yet found a streaming home, but if I'm a betting man, it won't be on Amazon Prime. Apple TV did not censor Jon Stewart, so says Jon Stewart. On a recent episode of The Town Podcast, Stewart discussed his exit from the show, The Problem with Jon Stewart, after two seasons. Stewart said, when you work for a major corporation, there is no real free speech. You get to do what you want until they think it's going to hurt their beer sales. Stewart is still on TV, however, guest hosting The Daily Show one day a week until the fall election. Luckily for him, The Daily Show viewers are not beer drinkers. The second half of the third season of Bridgerton just dropped on Netflix. The hosts of The View had fun discussing a steamy six-minute sex scene from a recent episode, prompting Joy Behar to refer to her fellow co-hosts as one horny panel. Co-host Sandra Haynes said, The scene had a physical effect on her, adding, It takes me places just watching it. I can't be alone. Can't be alone for six minutes during an R-rated sex scene? That could have been an entry in my high school diary. (laughs) If I had kept the high school diary. There will be a Practical Magic Part 2, according to the New York Post. The tabloid has Nicole Kidman on record saying she and Sandra Bullock are both returning for the sequel. The two actresses will revise their roles as Jillian and Sally Owens, two sisters who are witches and try to lift a curse that prevents them from finding love. The first film was released in 1998 and based on the 1995 book of the same name by Alice Hoffman. Oscar-winning writer Akiva Goldsman will write the script. 
There was a notable brat missing from Bratz, the new documentary by Andrew McCarthy. The phrase Brat Pack describes a group of actors from the 80s, which included Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Demi Moore, Ali Sheedy, and Molly Ringwald. McCarthy recently addressed Ringwald's absence from the film, saying that when he contacted her, she said she'd just like to keep looking forward. It was later revealed she would have loved to take part in the project, but saw a script titled Bratz and thought the documentary was about bratwursts and was too embarrassed to say anything after the fact. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media radio network with your forecast i'm Corey hartman for today scattered showers and thunderstorms mostly cloudy with a high near 82 for tonight partly cloudy and 70 slight chance of a storm mostly sunny and warm for tuesday with highs near 90 chance of storms tuesday night lows of 70 80 with storms on wednesday currently 75 degrees that's your wxco daily news roundup from civic media Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at bullfallsradio.com.